Hello and welcome to K21 Academy's AWS Solution Architect video series. Today with our AWS Certified Trainer, we are going to cover S3 and its storage classes. Amazon Simple Storage Service is an object storage service that offers industry-leading scalability, data availability, security and performance. Amazon S3 offers a range of storage classes designed for different use cases. We will see the comparison of different classes, their features and use case depending upon the scenarios. So, what are the storage types which fall under Amazon S3, how the data is transferred from one tier to another and what are the costs associated with it. We will cover all such questions in this video. Along with it, our AWS Certified Trainer will be talking about different S3 storage classes, costs associated with storage types, lifecycle policy for the data movement. So, let's hear from our expert trainer. As you can see in the screen, uh, there are several storage classes with respect to S3. So we are talking about only S3 here. So within S3, we have different storage classes. So I'll explain you one by one in an easy way. So first one is an S3 standard. This is the default one. And this is the costliest among all the storage classes. Right, it is the costliest among all the storage classes. And this is the default one. And here in this particular S3 standard, so data will be automatically replicated in all the availability zone inside within a region. So that is called S3 standard. S3 standard is mainly used to store a hot data, the data which you access very frequently. Right, so that is called S3 standard. So next thing we have uh, uh, something called S3 standard infrequent access. So the S3 standard infrequent access as a name suggests cheaper than S3 standard and it is used to it is used to uh, uh, store a data which you are not accessing very frequently, right? So that is called S3 standard IA which is called S3 standard infrequent access. This particular storage class is used to store a data so a kind of data which you do not access it so frequently right such kind of data can be stored in s3 standard infrequent access wherein it will be cheaper than s3 standard right now what is s3 intelligent tiring as the name suggests it is smart enough that this storage class is smart enough to move your data automatically between s3 standard and s3 standard ia so depending on the usage pattern this uses a uh, 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 artificial intelligence and a machine learning algorithm in the back end and it analyzes the pattern uh, 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 the way you access a data and automatically it will move your data uh, uh, it will keep your data in s3 standard and if it has not been accessed frequently it will automatically move your data to the s3 standard ia so having said that there will be a minor charges for this intelligent aspect here uh, but then it is not a major chunk. Uh, but then S3 intelligent tiring will help you if you are if you are not if you are not keen over towards managing all these S3 aspects. So you can use S3 intelligent tiring, which will help you to will help you to move your data automatically from S3 standard to S3 standard IA. Now uh, you guys must be thinking that uh, we have an Amazon lifecycle policy. So Amazon lifecycle policy, uh, right? Amazon lifecycle policy is a static way. What it does is, uh, let's say you access a data, uh, you store a data. Let's say I have set up a rule after 60 days, move it to an S3 standard IA. So what it does, uh, your lifecycle rule will automatically move it to, uh, uh, move it after 60 days, it will move to the uh, S3 standard to S3 standard IA. So one thing you need to understand is that if your data is in S3 standard IA, there will be a latency fetching the data. Uh, it will not be as quick as uh, it is there in S3 standard discussion or example. So what happens after 60 days? It will move to an S3 standard IA. Now after 60 days or after 65 days, you start accessing that data very frequently. At that particular point of time, what will happen? You will be accessing the data from the infrequent access only, wherein you will be getting a lot of latencies and you will be additionally charged also. So whenever you are storing a data in an infrequent access kind of a storage, which is cheaper. You will be charged for the retrieval also. Whenever you retrieve a data, you will be charged for it. So that is one of the uh, one of the things you have to keep in mind. So if you store a data in an infrequent access storages, there will be a retrieval fee uh, applied to you. But normal S3 standard, there will be no retrieval fee. Now, so that will be a problem. But what happens in intelligent tiring is now, for example, intelligent tiring moved your data from S3 standard to S3 standard IA, and after 65 days, you started accessing again it very frequently. Then what will happen as the intelligent tiring again it will identify your pattern and again it will immediately move the data from uh, S3 standard IA to 
S3 standard. So that is the advantage of intelligent tiring and uh, difference with the life cycle rule. So the next uh, next option is we have S3 uh, one zone IA. So S3 one zone IA as the name suggests it is cheapest among all wherein here the data will not be replicated across all the availability zone. It will be stored in a only one availability zone. So here the uh, availability will be uh, uh, compromised uh, and uh, your infrequent access is anyways there. So if you do, if you if, st if your data is not so much critical in that case you can store the data in S3 one zone IA. And we have for the archiving uh, we have uh, still more cheaper services like S3 Glacier and uh, S3 Glacier Deep Archive wherein the archive data will be stored in these kind of these are these are like examples of what wherein the archive data will be stored in these kind of storage classes. So let me uh, show you the performance chart. So as you can see uh, so your S3 right I was telling about 11 uh, 9 nines but uh, as you can see durability of S3 is 11 nines. So how, how does it achieve the durability it is because of the uh, because of its infrastructure it is because of the hardware devices which it uses in the back end as you can see all the services are having 11 nines of durability it is designed for such a higher level of durability even if some disaster happens still they will be durable enough right and designed for av av availability as you can see uh, all are having 99.99 and only one zone ia gives you 99.5 it's because of one zone IA, but that's not a very small number or a lesser number. It's also quite good enough. So as you can see the availability SLA, it's again 99.9, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99.9. Availability zone, it can be greater than three for all the options. So for only one zone IA, it is only one. So minimum capacity uh, charges per object. So minimum uh, capacity charges per object is 128 KB here and it is not uh, not applicable in all those things and minimum storage uh, duration charges other uh, storage classes. You will have to store the data um, or you will be charged for a data stored for at least 30 days or for 180 days. Uh, that is the minimum uh, days or charges should be considered and if you see the retrieval fee. It's starting from one zone IA. So it has been charged for per GB retrieval and uh, uh, per GB uh, per GB retrieved here. Uh, from one zone IA, you will, will be incurring the charges of retrieval. And as you can see, the latency for retrieval will be, as you can see, it will all in milliseconds. But if you go glacier and deep archive, it is in minutes, and deep archive, it will be in hours. That was a AWS certified trainer explaining about S3 and its storage classes. You can also check out our blog on the same by visiting k21academy.com slash AWS SA22. Amazon S3 and different storage types are part of the AWS Certified Solution Architect course in our training program where we cover all these topics in detail. If you are not AWS certified and would like to see what to expect in the exam or how to prepare for it, I would like to invite you for a free 90 minute session with AWS Certified Expert Trainer. We will talk about AWS Solution Architect course. Additionally, we'll show live demo, creating S3 bucket and making the data available to the entire world. We will also share information about the certification exam. So you can register for free by going on to this URL, k21academy.com slash AWS SA02. In the upcoming video in this series, we will look at AWS multi-factor authentication. So I'll see you next week. Please click on the subscribe button if you haven't done that already and press the bell icon so you don't miss out on our upcoming video.